Well, thank you so much, everybody. It's so good to be here. Um, I'm really excited to talk about our experience on this app. Um, I've been working for the San Diego Zoo for close to seven years now, but I've been in the industry and social media for almost a decade. And never before in my career have I managed a brand um, on a platform that has grown exponentially in such a short period of time. Uh, my organization is really, you know, about a culture of exploration and growth, and we like to be early adopters. Um, but when it comes to a new platform or launching a new account, we definitely do so cautiously and strategically. Um, so when TikTok began to make waves, we, like everyone else, just started doing our research and evaluating other brands in our space and seeing if it was a good fit for us. Um, we actually also were really fortunate to speak to a TikTok rep um, who kind of confirmed, he walked us through the app and kind of confirmed that animals will perform really well on this platform. And to be completely fair, animals perform well on most so social media platforms. So we're really fortunate in that sense. Um, ultimately, why we're on TikTok um, is that it's fun. We really enjoy this content. Um, it's different than, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that sense. Um, we feel like it's a really good brand fit because animals make people smile. Um, at the beginning as well, um, you know, the demographics, we were, we were hoping to reach this audience, this younger audience, the Gen Zers, um, that we were struggling to reach elsewhere. So, I mean, now our, you know, it's, it's that demographic has grown far beyond just Gen Z, but that was really our target at the beginning of it. Um, and really what was appealing was the virality of content. Um, you know, at the, you don't need to have as many people it's in today's sessions have spoken about is you don't really need to have millions of followers to get millions of views. Thanks to the algorithm and the For You page, um, it really allows for a massive potential reach. Um, and some of the tactics that we found really successful is, um, as mentioned earlier too, is just leveraging trending sounds and memes. One of our um, uh, best performing videos does this in a, in a fun, um, wild twist way um, that we found a lot of success in. Um, as a nonprofit organization, we also um, are very mission-based. So we do mission-based messaging where we're hoping to inspire um, future conservationists to care about wildlife and to care about the environment and to do their part to um, preserve um, habitats and, and species for, for future generations. So that's one of the our tools in our toolbox that we use for this platform as well. Um, we also master the creative tools um, and, and user engagement. So these are things um, like replying to comments, um, um, using live video and in-app effects. Um, we have some videos with voiceover to enhance accessibility. Um, we've also developed a Q&A style format to um, engage users and like a two-way kind of interactive conversation as opposed to just speaking to the audience. Um, and then probably most um, helpful for us and for my, my team was we, we identified some staff members at the zoo and safari park that were really in tune with the app. They were really good at creating content for it. And so we invited them to kind of co-create our, our video content and collaborate with what, um, wildlife care specialists to kind of highlight a different variety of perspectives and species um, to really round out our strategy. And so our results, based on you know these strategies and tactics that we used, um, just in 2020 alone, we grew by over 2,000 percent. We have 1.8 million followers and counting. Um, we've accumulated 152 million views and 21 million likes or hearts. And going back to our mission, our mission-based um, conservation, we've reached over 132 or 134 million potential conservationists. Um, we also caught the eye of the TikTok partnership team, so we were able to um, join their Learn on TikTok initiative, which was really um, an effort to bring educational content to the platform. And so in doing so, we had to create, um, we were part of the second phase of that initiative, and we created um, 60 videos in three months, so we were publishing five to six videos a week. Um, that all had this educational component to it, which was also very important to our strategy. We always want to educate our audience about 
the wildlife in our care and our, the conservation programs that we're a part of. Um, so I'll show you some examples about that in just a minute here. And then last but um, not least, um, we were recognized in TikTok's um, Brands That Inspire Us list in 2020 um, in not one, but actually two categories. So we had the top viral video from brands and the most organic follower growth um, in the nonprofit category. So again, just a testament to um, building on these strategies and tactics and being early adopters and really diving headfirst into this platform and creating content specific for this platform has been instrumental in our success. Um, so now the fun part. Um, so some of our top performing videos, as I mentioned, um, this is Otis, but we like, he's a river hippo. Um, we posted this video and it was an overnight sensation. I know people have, have mentioned throughout the day about um, this 90 day cycle for videos. Um, and that's completely true, but this one happened to be, and we saw immediate success. Um, this is kind of using a trending sound um, with this um, element of surprise that we found was really, really um, useful to getting this on the For You page and having tons of people um, recognize our videos and then follow us. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and hope that it works here. Hold on a second. Make sure my video. So apparently the people on TikTok like this. You walk in and boom puppy and now we're tiktok fame so apparently the people are so okay wait let me go back sorry about that um yeah so short and sweet um that's that sound at the time people were showing off their different pets and you know pets wearing outfits or what have you and we have happened to just have hippos and to um create this content i worked with the staff at the zoo that um manage the hippos and take care of the hippos and just showed them some samples of what people were doing for this sound and asked them to basically film themselves walking and showing um flipping up the the the, or the camera to show this in giant hippo um so that was really successful and after this um video went you know viral we, we reached over 48 million views um we really saw a bump in followers as well as a bump in views for all of the videos that we posted previously. So it's kind of a testament to what others were saying earlier today is just keep creating content. And eventually when you do get on the For You page or you do get um, more eyeballs on your videos, the rest of your content will see that lift as well. Um, this is our second bigger biggest performer, which is super interesting because it's, um, it's, a, it's a species of bird that maybe a lot of people aren't um, familiar with, but um, this video has over 30 million views and it's really a simple video. There's not much to this one. The sound didn't even really contribute too much to um, the success. I think it's really the content um, that carried this one. So I will sh link to this one real quick. Let's see if it'll play. <laughs> Yeah, that's it for that one. Um, again, I think it's um, a testament to that's just a super interesting bird. Most people, you know, I think the concept of bird brain and people don't recognize that birds are actually incredibly smart. Um, so that one was one of our, our second top performer. Um, moving on, this is kind of, um, this is a great example for our Learn on TikTok partnership. So part of that initiative involved, um, we had to just create educational videos, um, something that you either teach somebody something or it's tutorial style. Um, and for this, we were able to really um, lean on our conservation work and, and raise awareness for the programs that we have um, to protect species in the wild. Um, this video was actually created by a co-collaborator who works at our Rhino Rescue Center. Um, so he's very familiar with the TikTok platform, but also very familiar with this project. Um, so this one's a little bit longer, but it does it's, it's more educational and you'll notice that it has a little bit of a different format than the other two um, more just fun, oops. Um, more fun content that we've been posting. Let's see if this works here. Okay. 
There are only two northern white rhinos left in the entire world. They're both in Kenya under 24-hour armed guard, and they're both females, which makes them functionally extinct. So what can we do to make sure the northern white rhino doesn't disappear forever? Well, here's the plan. In our frozen zoo, we have preserved cells from hundreds of different species, including the northern white rhino. That's right, we've got rhino DNA. But how do you turn some frozen skin cells into an animal? Our scientists can inject a virus into these skin cells and rewind them into stem cells. Stem cells can become any cell in the entire body. We can then send signals to these cells to become reproductive cells. We put them together inside the lab to create an embryo. You then implant the embryo in a close cousin, the southern white rhino, who will carry the calf and then give birth. Bingo! Northern white rhino calf. So maybe it's true what they say. Life finds a way. There are um, okay, so that was a good example of kind of using all of these tools, having voiceover, um, you know, the text to uh, enhance accessibility. This is a longer form narrative, but um, I think um, he did a really great job at explaining this, you know, rather high tech um, scientific project that we have going on. So it became more accessible to our, um, our viewers. And not many people know that we're working on this project and just kind of all the things that are involved in um, saving a species from extinction. So this was really a, a win for us because it is a bit of a heavier message. It's not as just these fun one offs. It's a, it's a more meaningful um, video for us and it did really well. Um, and then last but not least, this is a um, just some, a, a tactic that we've been using that has been really beneficial. This has also been mentioned in previous sessions today, but engaging with your audience um, through the comments and replying to comments. Um, we find that this is, people just feel like you're having a, an actual conversation with them. They feel noticed, they feel recognized. Um, so we've, we've been using this throughout our Learn on TikTok partnership, um, and it seems to have um, a really great impact so I'll just play this one real quick here's a fun tortoise fact tortoises actually like to get scratched and pet on the back of their shells and that's because they feel it just like we do their backbone and ribs are fused to the inside of their shell here's a fun tortoise Okay, and for that one, I think, you know, it's it's very similar to being at our at the Zoo or Safari Park and being able to ask somebody a question and them answering it. Um, I think it has that same impact, and that's why these types of videos do really well. Um, so that's really all I had um, in terms of examples and the case study of our, our success that we've had on this platform. Um, I don't know if anybody has any specific questions or if... Um, Great. Well, if anyone does have any uh, questions, you can add them in. Ask a question box in the chat. In the meantime, I, I have a couple of uh, questions. I thought it was great. Thanks, Jen. It was was great to see those examples. And uh, I suppose one question is, uh, you know, could you replicate this today if you're a zoo? You know, were, were you kind of lucky to um, sort of get in there early? Are you now seeing competition from? you know, London Zoo with a, you know, huge team or some other, I don't know, yeah, um, Moscow Zoo is, is kind of like, yeah, or, or do you think this is replicable even now? Yeah, I think, um, I think a lot of, you know, our success could be attributed to timing. Um, you know, that, that hippo video happened to um, go viral right around the beginning of quarantine and I think that's when we saw this massive growth on the platform as well but we see people in our industry um, Aquarium of the Pacific is doing great things and they're like right up there with us um, they're also part of the learn on TikTok partnership um, so we see our friends and at different zoos and aquariums that are, are doing good things um, again I think it's just a matter of keep trying and testing things out and hoping that the algorithm, you know, lifts up your content like that. But yeah, I think it's definitely possible for zoos and aquariums or other nonprofit um, organizations to, to, you know, do well in this space for sure. Right. And if, if you're coming at this now, uh, would you do the same things or if you were, you know, would you take a different tack or? Yeah, I mean, we definitely, um, I think, we, we pivoted our strategy, so we spent, you know, less time on platforms like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and more time on tic developing content for TikTok. 
We also were fortunate enough to bring in um, additional help for, especially for that Learn on TikTok partnership, because we had to dedicate more time to it. I think that was key in our success. So I wouldn't say that we would do anything differently, but um, I think we would just, yeah, pay more attention to that platform and, and really devote a lot more resources to it. Um, we're a scrap, I mean, we're a large organization, but a scrappy nonprofit in many ways. So we try to work with what we can. Great. And yeah, great, great what you've done with, as you say, you know, relatively little resources. There's a question from Madeline and she's, she's saying, what was your favorite thing about the TikTok platform? Um, I just think it's a generally fun platform to be on. I love being able to incorporate like a sound or some random audio. It doesn't even have to be a song. Um, um, to develop content i think it adds this like extra layer of creativity also it's a little challenging to um do so in a in a positive and successful way but i think um the audio library and having the ability to use different sounds to really enhance your content um, is probably one of my favorite tools of the platform and i know it's super important as well and uh yeah your uh you know, you're obviously managing a lot of platforms, you know, Facebook, Instagram, probably YouTube. Uh, as you say, it's a relatively small team. How, what sort of percentage of your kind of effort and focus do you think TikTok's going to have going forward? Are you going to go all in on it? And this is the one where you've got the millions of views and going viral and you're going to be putting in, you know, 80% of your time or is it, no, we, you know, we're, we're going to, it's going to be one of several and maybe 20% um, and it, you know, we still need to be on Facebook to hit the kind of uh, people who might actually buy tickets or so on. Um, yeah, I mean, we've definitely spent a lot of time growing audiences on other platforms like Facebook and Instagram. So we're not going to give up those at all. But I do think we are trying to spend more time developing videos, um, a regular cadence of videos um, for TikTok. I think, um, you know, again, we're new in this. We're we're new in the in the sense that like we haven't done ads there. We haven't really worked with influencers on the platform. So these are all things that we are trying to do more of, as well as um, doing live videos. We just got the ability to fundraise on the TikTok platform, and that's really huge for us as a nonprofit. So we're hoping to incorporate more live broadcasts and hopefully fundraise for our organization and, and for our conservation projects that we have going on around the world. Great. And in terms of the content, were there things that you know, were you were, could you predict what was going to be popular? And yeah, it was always going to be Otis the hippo is uh, popular. The you know, and then the zoo, you knew he'd be big on TikTok, or you know, equally, were there things where you thought, well, look, this this video of the lion is going to be you know outstanding, but no one cared. We, we could, was it? Were you surprised by what's been popular or what hasn't been? Um, to some extent, there are definitely species that people gravitate to, hippos and pandas and all of those like iconic species that people enjoy. Um, I think, you know, I think again, it goes back to jumping on trends that are in a timely manner that really allowed us to, to be successful. Because um, sometimes we create content and we're like, this is going to be great. It's going to go viral. And then nobody sees it, you know, or it doesn't do, it doesn't perform the way we thought it would. So it's still, um, it's still, an unknown in many ways the algorithm i'm not i'm still learning how to create content for the app and um you learn something new every day so i think it is just about experimentation great and uh, finally what's been the reaction from the the staff and the uh the trustees or board of directors or the management and all your different stakeholders internally to your you know huge success on TikTok? have they been happy yeah, I mean, a lot of them are like, what is this TikTok thing? But, um, you know, after we explain what it is and our, all of our success, people are thrilled with us. Um, it's definitely, like I said, it's one of those platforms that we just grew exponentially in such a short period of time. And that hasn't happened, at least in the seven years that I've been at the zoo. So people were really excited. Um, I know even like our the wildlife care specialists at the zoo and park are all interested in how they can get involved. Um, they're all very willing to help us create content and do live broadcasts. So everyone seems really on board with it, which is just really great to have that support. 
Great. And how can people stay in touch with uh, the, the zoo and yourself? What's the best way of uh, keeping up to date? Obviously, your TikTok channel, which I think we've we posted. Yeah, um, follow the San Diego Zoo. We also have um, uh, SDZ Safari Park, which is our sister facility up in Escondido. So following those accounts, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and then TikTok, San Diego Zoo. Um, and then I'm on LinkedIn or on email. And I can share that all with, with everybody. Great. Well, really appreciate you taking part today. And yeah, I'm sure it's going to inspire other organizations, hopefully, to have the same success. And uh, yeah, I really loved what you're doing as well with the uh, uh, trying to spread awareness of things like the, the white rhino and the educational stuff. And hopefully, it's going to reach a whole new audience and have an amazing impact sort of way beyond the, uh, the zoo and, and also on the, the wildlife you're, you're, you're trying to protect. So really appreciate you taking part today. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, thanks.